Instax or Polaroid? Which instant film is the best instant film? In this video, I wanna dive deep into a little bit about the history of these two companies, as well as talk about the size, the price, and the quality. And stay tuned till the end because I also wanna cut open the film and give you a better understanding of exactly how they take pictures and what kind of creative opportunities each of these offer. My own relationship with instant photography started in 2019 when I bought my first instant camera. That really changed my relationship to my own photography, it got me more into being more creative with it and doing other things. And of course, as the cliche goes, it was like magic watching my pictures appear before my eyes right after taking them for the very first time. So Polaroid was first invented by Edwin Land in 1947, all because his daughter came to him one day and asked, hey daddy, why can't I see the pictures after you take them? Well, he got straight to work and over the course of many years, he invented the first Polaroid camera. This completely revolutionized the way we know photography today. By the 1970s and 80s, Polaroid became a huge pop icon all across America and worldwide as famous artists and photographers began using the Polaroid on a regular basis, not to mention the SX-70 came out and that really changed it because it removed the layer of having to peel apart the film and went straight to pictures popping right out of the camera that you can hold and watch immediately develop without having to do anything else. Then by 2001, as digital photography was on the rise, less and less people were really using the Polaroid camera. Therefore, Polaroid ended up having to file for bankruptcy. Thankfully, however, they did not go under yet until 2008 when they had to file for bankruptcy for the second time which is a time I very clearly remember because I was in the middle of my studies at university studying photography and all of my classmates were scrambling to buy the last of Polaroid's film. Shortly after Polaroid closed their doors for what we thought would be forever, the impossible project started. These guys basically bought the last of the Polaroid factories in the Netherlands and decided to invest in saving this magical film. Then by 2020, The Impossible Project and Polaroid could join together once again, rebranding as Polaroid. Fujifilm, on the other hand, didn't bring their first instant camera to the market until the late 1990s when the Instax cameras were introduced. These became super successful, especially in the Asian market because of a couple of South Korean TV shows that featured the Instax cameras and everybody just started buying them. Meanwhile, there was a deal between Polaroid and Fuji, which actually kept the Instax cameras out of the US market. However, in 2008, after Polaroid went out of business, Fujifilm for the first time could sell their cameras and film in the US. And actually just a fun fact, Instax cameras are so successful that they bring in more money than a lot of the other Fujifilm cameras and are like funding a lot of their pilot projects or things that they want to try out. And you might be asking yourself, of course, where was Kodak during all of this time? Well, the truth is they also tried to come out with their instant cameras and film in the 1970s. However, there was a huge lawsuit and Polaroid sued them for over $900 million. Now let's talk about size and format of these different films. First of all, you have Polaroid, the traditional one, it has an image size of about 3.1 by 3.1 inches. And then you have the Polaroid Go, which is a much smaller size coming to about 1.8 inches. Now, Polaroid comes in three different formats. You basically have a 670, 600, and you have iType. And just to give you a quick distinction between the different kinds of film, basically the older cameras required that a battery was used and the battery was placed in the film pack. So the 600 film has the battery that works with the older cameras, whereas the iType has no battery and it's a bit cheaper, slightly. And then of course you have the SX-70, which also has battery in it and has a much lower film speed. So for example, the iType and 600, well, they have a 600 ISO, whereas the ISO on the SX-70 is somewhere around 160. Fuji film, on the other hand, comes in three options. You have the mini, you have the square, and you have the Instax wide. The mini is about the same size as a business or credit card. Then you have the square, which is slightly 
larger to make it a square size. And then you have the wide, which is essentially the size of two minis put together. Instax film is just Instax film. It works all the way across. Of course, it depends on which camera you have and what format of film that you can use for it. Now there is a huge difference because Polaroid is offering a lot more film in different colors. So you have a yellow film or a blue film. Insex film on the other hand has an ISO of 800. It's much faster than Polaroid. They don't have as many different varieties as far as color goes, but they do have color in black and white. And they also offer a huge variety of different fun borders that you can get with the different types of film. Now that we've talked about the different sizes and formats, let's talk a little bit more about how these images actually look once they come out of the camera. Now, Polaroid has been known as kind of like an artistic camera. Part of that is because the formula has changed over the years. It's better than it was, but it's still nothing close to as good as the original film formula. It has a lot more softer colors or muted tones, and you never really know what you're going to get. I mean, if it's not stored properly at the right temperature, and it goes beyond its expiration date, then the quality is already reduced and you kind of just have an experimental film that you don't really know what's going to happen in the end. I will say, I didn't know this at first, the date that's printed on the box is actually the production date and not the expiration date. Insects, on the other hand, is a bit more consistent all the way around. The film looks the same. It can be used for several years past its expiration date and still look pretty decent. It isn't quite as sensitive to the temperature changes. So it's very much like what you see is what you get. Also because of the faster ISO, Instax tends to be a lot sharper and more clear when it comes to the images. Whereas with the Polaroid, it can produce a soft or fuzzy image especially if you're shooting with SX-70 film, which is a much lower ISO compared to the 600 and even more so compared to Fuji. Also, if you're traveling with instant film, I will say that the Polaroid film will not survive the airport scanners. It will shift colors and look like experimental film. Meanwhile, my Instax film has gone through a couple of airport scanners and I can't say that I noticed a huge difference. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the price of these different companies and how much the film costs as well as getting a camera to be able to shoot the film. Instant photography has always been known as being a bit more expensive than traditional 35 millimeter or 120 film. As far as price goes, Polaroid on average for a pack of film, you're going to pay pretty much anywhere between 16 and $20 for eight pictures. So a double pack runs for anywhere between 26 and 36. That comes to somewhere around $2, I'd say, per image, maybe a little bit more depending on the film type. Now regarding the Polaroid Go film, on the other hand, you can get it for a little bit cheaper. There you might pay like $16 for a double pack, so that means $16 for 16 pictures. So there you can get it a little bit cheaper, like $1 a picture. But the thing about that is they don't have as many options. They're not coming out with these specialty films every year. They don't have black and white film even available for the Polaroid Go. It's pretty much just eye type color film. And you have to keep in mind that the image size ultimately is actually smaller than what you get with an Instax square camera. Now Instax film on the other hand runs pretty much from the mini size all the way up to the wide. I have almost never seen the price get over $20 or $21 and you get 20 pictures for a double pack. So that comes to paying somewhere between 70 cents and $1 per picture. That is a huge, huge difference when it comes to the price. So ultimately at that price point for insect film, it's much more likely that you won't have a problem going to a party or a wedding or some kind of event and taking lots of pictures and also giving them away. As far as the prices of the cameras go, Polaroid has come out with new cameras in recent years. And usually the starting point for the prices run about 120, 150, that is, except for the i2, which came out not too long ago. Now that's just the newer cameras. If you want to just use an old Polaroid camera that you inherited from your family or that you found lying around, or maybe even something you picked up at a flea market, that would be much more cost efficient. You can get a cheap camera 
But then again, is it really cost efficient? Because in the long run, the only kind of film that you can take in those older cameras are going to be 600 or the SX70 because you need the battery to run the camera. You can figure out which one is more cost efficient for you. Would you rather buy a really cheap camera and then be pouring your money into the more expensive film? Or would you prefer to get a newer camera that takes the cheaper, newer film? That's a decision that you would have to consider when it comes to buying a camera, buying the film, and things like that. Instax, on the other hand, they have a huge range of products. They have new cameras coming out all the time. They're pretty good cameras on all different fun colors. They don't have as many modes. It might just be pretty much a point and shoot camera, but there are some exceptions to this. And those exceptions are things like the Insex Mini Evo, which if you're interested in that, I have a video on that as well. There's also the Square 6, which has been now discontinued, but that also offered some creative features. They've come out with a new Instax Mini 99, which also offers creative features. So they're kind of starting to market a little bit more to the creatives. I will mention though that with Instax, there is a huge filmography line that do offer a lot more creative features. Speaking of artistic flavor and creative possibilities, let's go ahead and cut open some of this film and talk about exactly how it's made and how it's creating pictures. And then we can also discuss some of the creative possibilities that you can do with these different film types. Now, when it comes to the film itself, they actually take pictures completely differently. So when it comes to Polaroid, Polaroid is actually projecting the image on the front of the image. Whereas with Instax, on the other hand, this film is actually taking the image on the back. Here's an example of a Polaroid image I've already dissected. On the front, there's a clear plastic layer. Then beneath that, we have the emulsion layer, which of course is where the image is. And below the emulsion is a milky white chemical layer. This layer is a bit drier, almost powdery compared to the chemicals used in Instax. And finally, at the back, we've got the negative layer. Now, when it comes to Instax, it's a bit different. As I mentioned earlier, the image is projected on the back of the film. So starting there, you've got a purple plastic layer, then a sticky black chemical layer, and beneath that, there's a gray layer, followed by a similar milky white layer, but unlike Polaroid, the image is printed directly on the front plastic without an emulsion layer. Because these films are structured differently, there are unique experimental options for each. If you want to explore those techniques, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you can find all my other videos about these techniques on my channel. Meanwhile, I'll just mention two key points. You can make transparencies with both Polaroid and Instax, though the methods are very different. And one of my favorite techniques, which is only possible with Polaroid, is the emulsion lift. I've got a step-by-step -step guide on that as well, so you can go ahead and click on the link if you wanna learn more about how to do that. First, film size and type. Polaroid comes in two sizes, original and go. The original is larger than Instax, but the Go size is smaller than Instax. Of course, Instax, on the other hand, offers three sizes, mini, square, and wide. Next, both films come in color and black and white with different borders and styles to choose from. As for ISO, Instax has the faster film speed of 800, so it handles low light better. As far as consistency goes, Instax definitely wins this round. I've never had an issue with half ejected images and their contrast color and saturation are a bit more vibrant and true to life compared to Polaroid. On price, Instax is the more affordable option, averaging about 80 cents per picture, while Polaroid is around $2 a picture. For newer cameras though, they're priced pretty similarly, both starting at about $120, $130 per camera. Finally, in terms of creative options, Polaroid has the upper hand. It's been favored by artists for decades and with techniques like emulsion lifts, which sadly can't be done with insects, it offers more room for experimentation. So after all that, what's my personal pick? Insects. So I tried here to give you my most unbiased opinion, but yes, at the end of the day, my vote goes to 
Instax because I know it's more reliable, I know it's less money, and I don't have a fear of making mistakes when it comes to shooting with it. I can take as many pictures as I want. It's not going to cost me nearly as much money as shooting Polaroid film, for example. So with that, I would love to hear where you fall on the great debate. Are you more of a Polaroid person or an Instax person? Please tell me your answers in the comments below. Also, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give it a like and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks so much for watching and happy shooting.